Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and this time I'm back on Gran Turismo 7 trying out the new update. Now the reason I wanted to give this update a go, despite not having played much Gran Turismo at all for quite some time now, is that the 1.31 update has added both a new physics model and support for 120 frames per second as well. Now, I have to say the news of this update did get me very excited. One of the reasons I never really gelled with Gran Turismo 7 when it first came out is that I didn't really get on with the physics that well. So if you don't know, I do actually have a fair amount of real world racing experience. And I often find that when I try uh, racing games in which I have to adjust my driving style too much from what I would normally do in the real world, then I kind of just lose interest a little bit, which is why I've spent most of my time recently playing on Assetto Corsa Competizione on PlayStation 5 rather than Gran Turismo. Now I'm going to start by doing the circuit experience at Spa in the Porsche 911 RSR. Now what you see on screen is me driving in 120 frames per second. Now I will do a comparison a little bit after we cover the physics, but the initial thoughts is that you do take quite a big graphical hit with 120 frames per second over running 60 frames per second. But again, I'll cover that shortly after we have a look at the physics. So my initial thoughts about how the car feels are actually really, really good. So with Gran Turismo previously, when it first came out, we had an awful lot of snap oversteer. Um, the car would just get away from you on the throttle sometimes and there was literally nothing you could do about it. The car would just spin round, uh, no chance of saving it. Then it went to a kind of a stage where you could really throw the car in and it was a little bit unrealistic with the amount of speed you could take through corners and felt very, very much video gamey and arcadey if uh, if you want to call it that but my initial thoughts on this is actually really really good the way I would describe it is the the speed you take through corners has perhaps been reduced from uh, the previous version of the physics model but you have increased traction in uh, you know the traction zones leaving corners so this actually provides a sensation that is much closer to what you would experience in the real world not being able to take corners ridiculously fast having a, a decent amount of traction on exit i mean you know in a gt3 car you, you have decent traction you're not going to be spinning that easily they're, they're literally designed for gentlemen drivers with fairly you know who are fairly inexperienced so it my initial thoughts are it's definitely definitely an improvement now after a couple of laps of driving it around in the porsche i did actually put in a half decent time and decided to spend a little bit longer on it i loaded up a ghost and really kind of focused for a good 10 15 minutes or so i managed to get into the top 10 on the leaderboard for the circuit experience so that's a really good sign for me that the physics are in a good place because i haven't really had much practice on the game for a long time and i'm basing my driving skills on essentially what i would do in the real world so i haven't had to adjust my driving style to suit the game. The game has suited my driving style by providing pretty similar physics. That's how, that's how I look at it at least anyway. Now this test would not be particularly thorough if I didn't drive other cars as well. So the road car I've chosen is the BMW M4. This is because I used this car for my previous physics tests on Gran Turismo 7, if you watched any of my previous videos on this. And it's also a car that I have driven itself um, at full speed on track at Brands Indy in the real world. Now straight away, I was able to drive the car with the in-game traction control turned off which is something that was actually impossible pretty much when the game first came out it was a little bit better when i previously tested it but now it's it does feel pretty good under traction you're if you do start to have a bit of wheel spin from the rear of the car you're able to uh, turn into the slide and control it uh, the car's not going to go around on you one thing i did notice though was the braking's probably where the game differs the most from the real world i would say it's very easy for the uh, the car to slide under braking and it definitely doesn't feel quite so slidey in the real world and um, cornering ability is probably 
um, about the same. But yeah, it's just the braking. The braking, I would say, um, you definitely feel like you have more braking performance in a high performance road car on, on track compared to um, what the what you feel in the game. Now, having jumped straight into the BMW from the Porsche Group 3 car, it was actually pretty nice to be able to see that I've been able to do six laps in a row that are pretty close on time, and I've gone straight from the Group 3 car and was straight away able to be pretty consistent in it. Um, it just feels good. It feels it feels like the, the physics are there or thereabouts. The car feels challenging enough to drive, but whilst still being able to drive consistently, and definitely does a good job of replicating real world driving. Now finally to test the physics, I thought I would have another go at the circuit experience at Deep Forest Raceway in the notoriously difficult to drive Audi R8. Now I remember having a go at this previously and you literally had to just tiptoe around the track. Any sudden movements would cause the car to spin uncontrollably. You had to be so gentle on throttle, so gentle on the brakes, really nurse the steering. Um, but to my surprise, it felt really good. I was able to push the car, um, be aggressive on the brakes, be aggressive on the throttle, throw it into the corners, and it just responded quite nicely. It, it was just how it should have been from the start, in my opinion. And actually, I was starting to really enjoy the game at this point. And after only a couple of laps, I was able to beat my previous best uh, record on this circuit experience and was only a couple of tenths outside of the top 10 leaderboard. I was then actually really enjoying the game and even ventured into sport mode and had a quick go at the time trial for Daily Race C and it didn't take me long to get kind of up to pace. So you can see as I cross the line here, I add a second or take a second off of the time I set on the previous lap and already that was fairly uh, fairly competitive and again just reinforces the fact that I'm actually quite liking this. Now onto the frame rate so we have 120 as an option now but uh, you take quite a big graphical hit as a result so obviously there is twice as many frames each second uh, going from 60 to 120 so the image is a lot smoother but you take a, a big graphical hit. I'd really love to see your thoughts on this let me know in the comments but what we're going to do is i'm going to show you a part of the lap at 60 frames per second and then we're going to move on to 120 frames per second so you can see the difference remember that on youtube you will not notice any difference in the frame rate because youtube videos will be 60 frames per second so all you will notice is the graphical differences so as we head up the start finish right here just look into the distance and you can see a little bit of pixelation you can see that the white lines start to uh, they're not smooth i don't know what the exact term for it is um, the grass isn't as detailed the the textures on the road aren't as detailed it's much more similar to what gt sport was so in 60 frames per second now you can see the detail in the road is so much clearer there's a lot more reflections the lighting on the curbs is a lot better and if you look far ahead up into the distance everything is much clearer it's more defined the writing on the banners is more visible the grass looks more realistic even the trees look better and the differences can be seen in the replay mode as well so here we are with a 120 frames per second replay of turn one at the red bull ring this is a new car by the way the audi rs5 nearly said r8 dtm and it's actually really nice to drive so here we are in 60 frames per second you can get again just see how much better it is i mean rewind and watch back a couple of times if you want but it, the reflections the lighting just everything is more detailed and it's, it's definitely a high resolution image as well so overall i'm really pleased with what they've done with the physics and i'm actually quite looking forward to spending some more time on Gran Turismo and maybe getting back into sport mode and having a go at some of the daily races in the very near future. In terms of the frame rate, personally, I'm not convinced. I'm definitely going to spend a bit of time in both 120 frames per second and 60 frames per second to really decide what I prefer. I'd really love to know your thoughts on this latest update. Have you been enjoying the physics or did you maybe prefer them how they were originally? And what do you think of the frame rate? Do you have a monitor that is capable 
of displaying 120 frames per second and do you think it's better uh, do you think it's worse let me know your thoughts um, i'd really be interested to see what everyone else's opinion is on this now thanks for watching guys don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already i will be posting my latest wheel settings for Gran Turismo 7 with the latest update very very soon that will be out in a couple of days after I've released this and other than that I will see you again very soon